This is the one. Remember to talk about the conic gradient. All right. How could you create this scroll animated highlight call to action type interaction <laughs> that's doing the rounds on YouTube? It's a new feature. If you haven't seen it, if someone says the word subscribe or like, then certain CTAs on the screen get highlighted with this fancy gradient. Um, I think it might work for the share and download as well. I haven't tried it. But how could you do it? Well, your first thought might be to jump into some code and here I've got a button, but you might jump straight for an intersection observer, which is a good idea. Um, intersection observer uh, provides a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element with an ancestor element or with a top level documents viewport. Couldn't have summed it up better myself, MDN. So the idea is that you'd observe this button and set a threshold of one. And that means that when it's fully entered, or fully exited, you could toggle a class as shown on this line here. So we're saying if like um, is intersecting, then add the class shimmer, else remove the class shimmer. Now, what does that actually do? Well, in our styles, um, if we scroll down, and there's a fair bit here, but essentially the idea is to show the gradient like fade it in with opacity, slide it across, and then hide it again. Um, don't worry about this part, we'll get to that. But let's jump into Firefox and you can see it in action. So as we scroll down, the class is toggled, the animation happens. Great, right? It fades away. So if we inspect this, we actually see how it works. So if I jump in here and if I set the button to say an overflow visible so take off the overflow hidden and then on our button shimmer I'm just going to take this hide piece off and here you can see what's actually happening so I have a pseudo element that's way bigger than the button right and it's got a conic gradient on it and the conic gradient is set up so it's a uh, minus 60 degrees at 5100 and then it goes around and creates this kind of like, almost like sun rays, right? The cartoon style. But the idea is if you slide that along, it kind of gives a similar um, impression to the YouTube button. Um, just kind of trying to think outside the box of it. But if we replay this animation using Firefox's DevTools, we can set the animation down to like 0 0.1 times and then play it. You can see how it works. Look, it slides across and then it's clipped, right? So if we set the overflow back and then play it again, see here it's sliding across. And then the other two animations are just to take the opacity uh, on and off. So the trick is the opacity on for the gradient and then hide it by setting it off on the parent. Instead of setting one keyframe that would have to be padded out uh, in the middle and then just off at the end, which is another way you could do it. Again, this is just one way you could do it. It's one way to explore doing it. In Chrome, this works slightly differently because CSS scroll-driven animations are supported. So as you scroll down, it works the same, right? You get a similar kind of effect, but the actual way it works, so we say, um, doesn't work the same. So if we go to the CSS, we have this piece. If um, at supports animation timeline scroll, so we're checking for support, then checking for motion preference. The trick here is to use a custom property. So a custom property shimmer, that is a number with an initial value of zero. And we animate this um, custom property between the value of zero and one, and based on where the button is within the viewport. So we use a view timeline. This gives us access to being able to tell where an element is within the viewport. And then we use the animation range of entry. So that means once the element has entered in, because we're using steps here, so it will be the end. So once it's fully entered, then trigger it. Once it's triggered, it gets set to one. And then we can use that custom property value for the opacity and the translation for the shimmer element and its pseudo element, the before. And that will trigger the slide of the gradient and the opacity hide and reveal. And that is what gives us the effect. 
it's a trick really we've just got a big pseudo element and we say hey once we get to this point show it for a second or one and a half seconds and during that window slide this big conic gradient across and make sure it's all clipped so it kind of gives that kind of gradient -y, shiny effect and that's the trick that is the trick to it so you could create this without any javascript at all if the browser supports it and if not use an intersection observer it's a fine choice so yeah um like and subscribe and we'll see if the button does does what it's meant to do let me know if it does and uh yeah stay awesome